Dear Father in Heaven, please help me to say what you want me to say in this recording, this video. Please let your Holy Ghost come upon me as this is the second time I have to make this attempt because the audio was not good in the last one. So help me to recall what it is that you want me to say. And I pray your Holy Ghost come upon me in Jesus' name. So, saints, it's a little over 1 o'clock in the morning. I was laying in the bed, and I felt like God told me to go make this video. A lot of things were uh, on my mind, and God was reminding me of the times that he was angry with me. And I was thinking about how I, I never made a video about it. And I felt like he told me to get up and go make one. <laughs> and it's okay because I went to sleep at like 8, so I'm not really all, all that tired right now. So I probably went to sleep at 7. I went to sleep really early. But anyway, um, so I don't know how many of you all that will hear this video have seen my video where I went to hell. Um, that was not a video that I wanted to put together because it was shameful and this one is also shameful but I have to obey God so the first time that Jesus came to me and he was really upset with, with me and uh, let me say this there have been other times that Jesus has came to me and he very gently rebuked me and one of them is one of the earliest experiences that I had um, like uh, going on for you well three years ago and I really need to put that video together because it will show you all how important it is to forgive but I haven't done that yet God forgive me but I I need to hope when the Holy Ghost come upon me and tell me to do something then I go get up and do it I just haven't felt the option and to get up and uh and do that one yet but you know hopefully soon so anyway uh, I'm not going to talk about the times when Jesus gently rebuked me. I'm going to talk about the times when he was angry, okay, because that is what he wanted me to say. He gets angry, okay, and um, I'm going to get right into it. So one of the first times that he came to me and he was really angry, um, I had did a video and on this video, it was one of my earliest videos. It was like my second video, I think. It was really early. And um, I had misquoted the Bible on this video. And I kept feeling the Holy Ghost telling me over and over, you misquoted the Bible, you misquoted the Bible. Because I didn't go and read the Bible, the statement that I had made. I didn't read it because I said, well, I'm sure it's right, you know. But it wasn't. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost kept telling me that. And I wouldn't listen. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's right. I'm sure it's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, those of us that make videos, it takes half a day to make a video. Sometimes all day. Matter of fact, there have been videos that I've worked on that have taken me like a week to do all the editing and uh, the pictures. And, you know, um, a lot of images, especially in my first videos, I made those images myself. Like I edited them all. So it, it was very time consuming and this, this video was really time consuming for me. And I didn't want to take it down because then I would have to do it over again is what was my thinking and I didn't want to have to do it over again so I wasn't listening to the Holy Ghost telling me that, it, that I said something incorrect. And so um, after all that ignoring God, Jesus came to me and he was this huge giant. He came in my room like a whirlwind. I mean just pow just bam he came in my room so fast I was sleeping in the bed and um I jumped up out of my sleep and I said it's the rapture because I thought it was the rapture because I knew it was Jesus I knew instantly it was Jesus and that's why I know when he comes for that rapture we gonna know it you know people try to tell me about some blue beam or whatever I forget the name of it because I didn't pay no attention to this nonsense and talking about how they're trying to fake the rapture. Let me tell you something. We're going to know it's the rapture. I knew that was Jesus as soon as he came in my room. I didn't even open my eyes yet. I knew. And I jumped up out of my bed. Set up in the bed. And I said, it's the rapture. And he audibly said to me, if you're going to work for me. And I was like, 
And then he telepathically told me why he was upset. And he was saying that I, I, I needed to look into. He didn't directly tell me I was wrong in what I said. But he said, you need to go read the Bible and, and look into that. And, um, and he was telling me that I work for him and that I can't be doing stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you something. I, you know, I'm, this is airing my dirty laundry. Now, I have a high IQ, but I did not graduate school with a 4.0. The majority of my life, I have done enough. Enough. I will say, I'm going to come to class. I'm getting the, what is it, a B? That's good enough. I ain't coming back. I was lazy. I was a lazy, lazy person. Not anymore. Jesus Christ rebuked me. He rebuked that lazy spirit right out of me. And um, and now I double check, check, triple check. I make sure, you know, and I don't say anything if I'm not sure about it because I work for God. I represent God with the things that come out of my mouth. I have to make sure they're correct. And if I'm not sure about something, I have to say, well, I ain't, I'm not sure. I don't know. You know, I don't try to um, twist the Bible to make it look like I'm some guru or something. I mean, forget that. So anyway, um, when Jesus came to me like that, I knew instantly that he could snatch me right out of my skin. I knew that instantly. Let me tell you something. There is a side of Jesus that is loving, yes, but there is a side of him that is just. And he did not say, vengeance is mine. I will repay for no reason. He said it because he will repay. He, there is a side of him that is that gets angry. And he was just, just like I said, um, he was a giant when he came in my room. And he was mad. He was mad. And, um, yeah. I, I was really hurt about that, and I now I admit that I've done better, much better, and I don't um, try to say things that ain't right. So anyway, um, and and after that he put me to to sleep. So anyway, uh, the next time that he came to me, and uh, he was really angry, and I just want to say this, okay? We know that the Bible says in Hebrews twelve and six. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, it, and scourge it every son whom he receiveth. So, if you are not feeling the chastisement of God, then maybe you're not on a certain level that you need to get on. Because the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, it. And it says, he scourgeth every son, not a few, he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So, um... He definitely will chastise you. Like I said, he's gently done it to me probably the majority of times. Yeah, the majority of times. But um, there have been times when when he didn't. And here's another one. So I have been really, really sad and out. Really crying and crying and crying and crying. Because um, I was listening to the devil. He was telling me two things. He was telling me that uh, in the new world, I wasn't going to have a good job and um, because I had just started my ministry and, and um, I didn't do nothing for God. I haven't did much of nothing. And I'm in the new world. I'd be lucky if I'm uh, picking up straws. I mean, he was just really just just getting on me. So and then another thing he kept telling me is how. How many times that God was angry with me? God had to keep um, uh, chastising you, and He had to keep uh, helping you, and and look at you, you, you look at you. And and I was sitting here listening to the devil. My kids would well, they noticed I was sad and out, and they would ask me, Mom, are you sad? Like what's the matter? And I was just like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And so then um, I would be sitting in dark rooms. Just crying my eyes out, and the devil was just really just letting me have it about how I'm just now doing something for God I, all of this time. And he was reminding me of my past. Okay, and this is the God in heaven, honest truth. Um, I was called to the ministry back when I was 17, 19 years old. God was calling me to feed his sheep. And um, not saying that he called me to be a pastor. I've never felt led to be a pastor, and I don't want to be a pastor. But anyway, let me go on. And um, but he wanted me to ministry minister, which I'm doing now through my videos. Praise God. And um, in other ways, 
But he came to me, and I didn't even know the Bible. Okay, I wasn't hardly reading the Bible at all back then. I did not know this was in the Bible, but this is what he did. He kept saying, do you love me? And I said, yes, I love you. Do you love me? Jesus, I would, I would see him. I would have visions of him. He would say, do you love me? Telepathically. And I would say, yes. Yes, I love you. Do you love me? Yes. Yes, I love you. Why, you, why God, do you ask me this over and over? He said, feed my sheep. And then sometimes he, would, he kept coming to me over and over. I kept seeing visions of him. I, I was in church multiple times, and I saw him, a vision of Jesus, right there in church, saying, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And I was, would not listen to God because I didn't know what he was talking about. I honestly thought, well, maybe he's talking about tell, you know, my friends about him. So I did. Okay, I did do that. I said, yeah, you know, you need to consider getting right with God and everything. And um, that's what you need to do. But as the years went on, I knew he was calling me to something more than that. He wanted me to do more than that. And I didn't want to do it because I was too busy in the world. And I was 17, 19 when this happened because I know of the church that I was going to. And, uh, uh. You know, he was he was calling me, and I didn't want to hear hear what he was saying. And unfortunately, God forgive me. And now I'm over forty. So I I did not heed the voice of God until I went through some very horrific, tremendous things that happened in my life. Like I said, I will have to. I said this in another video. I will have to do another uh, testimony part two. But God brought me to my knees. And then the only voice I could hear was his. And it was the same message. Feed my sheep. And so, um, yeah, I went through I went through some horrific, horrific events. Okay. But um I'm not gonna get into that right now. So about three years ago, going on four years, I heeded the call. And then the devil was bothering me about that. You know, all this time, what have you been doing? You ain't been doing nothing for God. Who on earth do you think you are? And I was feeling so bad and so sad. And I was listening to the devil. And, and the Holy Spirit told me, that's the devil. And I had the audacity to say, yes, I know it's the devil, but he's right. Oh, you don't want to say that to God. <laughs> Jesus told us himself that the devil is the father of lies. So we don't ever want to tell God the devil is right. And I, I didn't know that yet. Oh, I knew it when uh, Jesus came to me, which I'm about to get into. So anyway, I'm feeling all sad and crying and horrible. and crying myself to sleep like a baby. <laughs> Just crying myself to sleep. I was so sad. And, you know, the devil was really bothering me. And then uh, Jesus came in my room, woke me up. I knew it was him instantly, like a whirlwind. Just, and I'm expecting Jesus to feel sorry for me all this time. I feel like he's going to hold me, he going to feel sorry for me. Uh, uh, no, no, he was angry. He was real angry. He came in my room like a whirlwind. And he was this huge giant. Now, before he was a giant in my room, but he didn't take up the whole space of the room. This time he took up the whole space of my room from one side to the other. And I saw him the same way I did before. He was a shadowy figure. I couldn't see the features in his face. And I just saw, um, I could see his, his face, his shoulders, and right below his shoulders, but not the features in his face. Because he looked like a, 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 a dark shadow. And immediately woke me up. And he was staring at me. And I was scared to death. And I hurried up and I threw the cover over me. And I said, oh, oh, my goodness. Because he telepathically let me know that he was really angry at me for that. Because you, we don't listen to the devil. Once you know it's the devil, you rebuke the devil. And I learned that the very hard way. And I said to myself, um, I, when I put the cover over my head, I felt God tell me that he could see me under this cover. And I was like, and I said, Jesus, come over here. I'm running through the, through, the, through the wall. I was like, I'm going to get up and run through the wall. I was scared to death. But thank God he didn't even say anything. He just came in and stared at me. But he told me telepathically that he was really upset with that. You, and he was telling me, you don't listen to the devil, Shauna. You, what, what are you doing? You, you don't listen to the devil. So anyway, um, those are... The two times, uh, I'm going to say one more. It's been, it's been a few, but these are the worst times. 
Another time, he didn't actually come to me, but he had kept telling me the same thing. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And before I would do anything and tell anything about God, tell anything about anything, um, I kept telling God, well, well God, you know, um, women ain't supposed to minister. And, what do, you know, that's what your words say. Because, you know, I was trying to get out of it. And I was like, well, you know, that's what your words say. That's what the Bible say. And he, he very sternly said to me, I never said that. And I was like, but, but your word says that. And he didn't, even re, he didn't even respond the next time. And I had to go do a whole study about it, which I did a video about that already. So um, those are the three things that, that happened to me. Now, there will be people that will probably hear this video and say, well, um, I don't believe it. Because I cannot believe that God would get angry. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Because on that day of judgment, when he says, depart from me, um, let's see how nice he is that day. Oh, and let's not forget that he threw the tables over as he was angry then. And let's not forget about the times that he even called people names in the Bible because he was angry. Yes, Jesus gets angry. He is both loving and he is both just. And he did not say, vengeance is mine, I will repay because he was a punk. He said it because he's God. He's the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. And yes, ma'am, yes, sir, he gets angry. Okay? And I've had people tell me that already that I've shared some of this with that they just cannot believe that Jesus would get angry. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. Anyway, um, so also... We know, and this is one of the things that, that Jesus told me before as well. One time uh, I was with my daughters and he gave me, he told me this scripture. My, I have an audio, um, and I've never shared this because, you, you know, I don't, anyway, let me just, let me just put it this way. Jesus told me and my daughters, John 15 and 2. He said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So what that means is that if you're a Christian and you're bearing fruit, and that's great, you know, somebody give you a hand. The Bible says that God will purge you even more, so you can bring forth even more fruit. That's in the Word of God, Okay. Now, many Christians are not on this level, and they cannot receive this message. This is something that they can, they, you know, they living in the fluffy cloud somewhere, and they cannot understand these scriptures in the Word of God. Okay, so pray on it. Um, don't waste my time. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be angry <laughs> or rude. God forgive me. But just seriously, pray on it. Pray on it. Okay. Um, and I want to give, give a response. To a message I got from an atheist. I had an atheist send me a message. And he says to me. What kind of an evil God. Would send people to hell. Something like that. And I immediately blocked this young man. And I'll tell you why. Okay. First of all. I am not the one. That is going to sugarcoat the word of God. And tongue twist the word of God. To accompany somebody's feelings. Because I had already ministered to him. This wasn't the first message we had. I had already been ministering to him. And this was him getting nasty. Okay. So I had already given him the truth. So that was already done. Nothing else needed to be said about that. I already gave him the truth. And he was just getting nasty. I'm not going to change the word of God. Because somebody doesn't like it. I'm not going to sit up here and start preaching or teaching. And I don't, I don't call myself a preacher because I'm not a preacher. I'm not going to start saying things that are not uh, right with the word of God because somebody don't like it. First of all, let me say, I, I don't do anything for somebody's feelings at all. I don't care about people's feelings on that regard. I'm, I don't care. I love you. But if you cannot receive the truth, then, hey, it is not my job or any saint of God's job to twist the word of God to fit somebody's feelings. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yes, you will go to hell. And he is not an evil God. 
He is a loving and just God. And I want to give a few scriptures. First of all, Revelations 20 and 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Period. If your name ain't in the book of life, you go into hell. And that's it. The Bible says in Revelations 21 and 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Period. You going to hell. You going to hell. Yes, he is a loving God, but he is a just God and he is not a punk God. And he literally told me that once. He said, I'm not a punk God. Because I have been saying that to people. And then he repeated it after to me on something else. He's not. He's not a punk God. He's a loving God. He's, he'll, he'll love you to pieces. But you got to take the, turn, the time to give your life to the Lord. Okay? You need to come to the Lord. Now, I'm not the one that's going to sugarcoat that to you. And that's it. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He told you what to do to be saved. He wrote it in the word. OK, I'm not going to um, start pulling pulling down the fairy dust and, and making up something to make somebody feel better. John 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's pretty simple. Believe in the Lord. The Bible also says in another scripture, if you, if you love God, you'll keep his commandments. Okay? If you believe in God, the Bible talks about the character of people that believe in him as well. Uh, he, gave you, he gave you this beautiful book called the Bible. You can go and study the Bible. And you can understand how to be saved. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the violence take it by force. And what that means is it's a violent takeover to get into heaven. People don't start blinking their eyes and um, like, what is this movie? Uh, the Wizard of Oz. We don't put our shoes together and say, you know, I wish I was there or whatever her phrase was. And then all of a sudden we're in heaven. It doesn't work that way. You have to be violent about getting into heaven. You got to fight to get into heaven. If you don't want to fight to get in heaven, hey, how about you spend the next millennium trying to figure out why God could put you in hell? But you will go to hell. Okay, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that to you. And I'm sorry that, um, well, okay, I'm not sorry. Yeah, I'm not sorry. Anyway, God bless you all. I love you. Stay in God. And um, let's make it to glory.